and the at Nevada's Moonlight Bunny Ranch brothel, success depends less on beauty and more on negotiation. My negotiation skills have gotten a lot better. I have a very, very high success rate. Ladies have even commented before that as soon as I get a guy into my hands, they know it's a done deal. This is Alice Little. She used to sell cell phones. Now she sells herself. Here in rural Nevada, prostitution is legal, but it's illegal to list prices for sex work. That means sex workers have to negotiate. Many of the women here describe their worth in terms of the deals they strike. I really started to understand just how valuable I am and what my worth really is as a woman. And it's really empowering to be able to say, I'd love to go with you to Vegas. I want to spend a couple nights with you and it's going to be five figures. And for them to then say yes, sure thing, why don't we invite a friend too? That is such an adrenaline rush, and it's so exciting. Whatever you think of sex work, spend a couple days here and it becomes clear success depends on sales skills. All the ladies in the house are independent contractors. We all charge our own prices. We can choose what we do and don't want to offer. And study after study shows young women are particularly bad at negotiating. But at the brothel, they get good at it, fast. What could I have done better? OK, Does first off, get closer to me. Closing that distance between you and the other client helps to make things feel a little bit more personal. Yeah. Alice has been here for 10 months, and she's already mentoring new arrivals. I don't like to mention any other clients because it's all about them, so there's no upper spectrum or lower spectrum. The ranch takes 50% of what they earn, so it has a vested interest in making them better. In its simplest form, what we are is a highly motivated sales team. Dennis Hoff owns seven out of the 10 biggest brothels in Nevada. They're strange places. Dennis and many of the women call themselves feminists. Yet he also calls himself a pimp, refers to his employees as girls, and has them call him daddy. OK, so we're going to announce the daily top bunnies. Oh my god. And this is their weekly sales meeting. They call it a tea party. Clap, girls. It's part pep rally, part primer in financial literacy. Getting home loans, car loans. The women wear funny hats and talk investment goals. Yeah, who did this? And they're taught negotiation skills. The sky's the limit. It's, it's tailored to what they're selling. But the first thing is, is that you need to break down the client salesperson uh, wall, if you will. And in our case, because it's, it's a sexual service that we provide, it's the girls getting close to them. It's touching, it's feeling, it's holding the hands. The more personal it gets, the closer it gets, the more intimate it gets, the more the wall it opens up. Thank you, I appreciate that. Take away the seduction, and a lot of the tips apply to most negotiations. Focus on what you bring to the table before you talk money. So let me go ahead and take care of lunch for the two of us, and I'll even drive you there. Make sure the person you're negotiating with always feels like they're getting a deal. You've been just so wonderful to me, and I really want to make today special for you. I'm going to work with you this time, and if you have fun with me, perhaps you could leave me a little tip and even come back to see me again. And finally, it helps to know what others are earning. It's inspiring to hear, hey, I just was handed $20,000, $30,000, and this is something that this customer does several times a year. To hear those kind of numbers thrown out there, it takes that money from the fantasy world into the reality of, wait a minute, I could make that too. I can ask for that. Why am I not asking for that? And this goes to Harley. Yay! Yay, Harley, Yay. Good job. congratulations. Top bunny of the week. Harley booked $9,500 the day before. She embodies a lot of the contradictions of the ranch. She's clearly good at negotiating, and yet she hates it. You know, I really want to make you have a good time. She described it as empowering, but has stories that show just how ugly the negotiations can get. The negotiations is my least favorite part of this place. I hate it. Because it's really, it's really uncomfortable sometimes, you know, trying to ask for more money when a guy feels like, you know, that's overpriced just because they haven't been here before, they don't understand. Is 1500 the most you could do, or do you think, you know? 
I had a guy who came in here and disrespected me one day, trying to tell me I didn't know what bills were, I didn't know how things worked, like, you're just here to make money, you don't pay any bills, you don't have a family to support, I can't spend this money on you because I'm trying to take my kids to Disneyland. And it's like, whoa, excuse me. I was like, I understand you would take your kids to Disneyland and do things like that, I understand. I said, I have a family too. Both of my grandparents are home. Um, they have several different types of cancer. They're going through different treatments. I try and help them um, go through that. I try and help them support themselves. I don't have no more. Harley's dream is to own a game ranch. In between clients, she feeds horses on the brothel property. She used to be an EMT, but like everyone we talked to at the ranch, she came because she can earn a lot more money here. What I do is I set um, a certain goal depending on the time of length. You know, I'm here like this time. Um, I'm going to be here for three weeks almost. Um, so I kind of set a goal of $50,000 to book. Never in a million years did I think in my mid-twenties I would have a high-end luxury car. I'd have a rental property, I'd have a personal property, and I have a location for a bed and breakfast. That's, that's crazy. That's, it's like it breaking the system is the way I kind of think of it as.